Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Higher Aim with Dr. Kurt Dodd. If you'd like to stay connected with us outside of today's digital broadcast, be sure and download our free mobile app for your smartphone. Through the app, you can watch more of Dr. Dodd's sermons, read daily devotions, access our Bible reading plan, and so much more. To download this free app, just open the App Store on your smartphone and search for Higher Aim with Dr. Kurt Dodd. We hope this app is an encouragement to you and that using it will help you grow in your relationship with Christ. Thank you again for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy this episode of Higher Aim. Today, I I want to begin by telling you that, uh, that there are a lot of things that you and I may not know about ourselves, you know, honestly. Uh, Sometimes we think we're very self-aware, but we don't know sometimes as much about ourselves as we ought to. In fact, I will tell you, I was uh, surfing the internet. I don't know about you, but I love the internet. You can find some of the most useless information uh, (laughs) on the planet by going uh, through the internet. And uh, I came across an article um, that, uh, that came from Live Science, and it was entitled, 10 Things That You Didn't Know About Yourself. Let me give you a couple of them. Uh, did you know that your stomach secretes corrosive acid? Maybe that's why the batteries in our lives sometimes are all messed up. I mean, Our stomach produces that kind of stuff. And get this, do you also know that your body position affects your memory? Did did you know that? That uh, how you sit or what you do or you may cock your head a certain way and you're singing a song and that all of a sudden brings back a memory uh, from many years ago and you don't know how you got there, but it was really brought on by the position of your body. Isn't that interesting? And, and then, did you know, a little factoid that you're, you probably came to church to know, uh, that your bones will break down to balance minerals th- uh, that you don't have properly. In fact, your body has, has to have certain mer- minerals to function And your bones will begin to break down and give those minerals to your body. Whoa, that's really interesting. And did you know that your brain, though it only uh, amounts to about 2% of your entire body weight, will take 20% of all the oxygen and calories that you consume? I mean, your brain, I mean sucks you dry, quite frankly. That's the truth. Um, And then this one, this comes as no shock. Do you know that puberty uh, reshapes the brain structure? It literally, uh, well, that's what causes missed curfews and and, uh, kids just trying to figure out, you know, why they're so forgetful. That uh, puberty does a number on uh, the brain. And then there's another one. Um, that, uh, that the world loves to do things with you. Uh, have you ever noticed that someone who uh, yawns, uh, that that's kind of uh, a shared thing, and uh, somebody, you're sitting next to somebody who yawns, you, you may start doing that too. Or if, if someone who is uh, crying next to you, all of a sudden it affects you, and you, you may find yourself getting teared up, or laughter. If someone starts to laugh, all of a sudden that, that uh, uh, invokes a, a response that uh, few of us really know about. Yeah, I mean, it's very interesting. Uh, our, our bodies are very curious. But I would also tell you that... Uh, The one thing that uh, really surprised me as I was looking at this uh, was that, uh, did you know your skin has four different colors? It has four different colors. First, uh, uh, 
the, there is the kind of pigment that is this creamy uh, and, and white, and then closer up to the surface, uh, surface there are red blood vessels that give the pigment uh, as well a little little red, and then there is a yellow pigment in all of us that uh, uh, is there, and then there is a black pigment uh, that all of us have. So you realize that we are all colored people. That's the deal. We all have white, yellow, red, and black. Did you know that? I mean, I mean, wow. Uh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. But now I do, and you do too. But there, are, there is one question that I think that we need to ask that a lot of us don't even consider, and that's this. Why do I give? Now, I know that you know that you need to give. I mean, God has created all the universe with uh, a desire to give. The sun gives, the moon gives, the, the grass gives, and especially if it gets a lot of water, it gives a whole lot. Uh, and everything gives, except man has a difficult time giving. Uh, man takes and takes and takes and uh, then receives and then puts it in a can, closes the lid and poisons the rest, it seems. But there is a desire to, for giving. And I want you to really think about what motivates you to give. I, I want you to think not only about money, but what motivates you to give of yourself. I think about the team of guys and, and ladies that have gone down to Ecuador. What a great uh, uh, illustration that they have given. They've done that for years and years and years and have ministered to an entire community down there uh, by building houses for free and totally furnishing them for free. Have you ever wondered why someone would give of themselves in ministry? Uh, what causes you to want to take that of which you have and give it away? Well, uh, today what we want to do is examine why we give. And I want you to look at three basic Scripture verses that are very, very powerful. The first one happens to be Leviticus 2730 that says this, a tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Let me break this down for you. A tithe means literally one tenth. That's what it, what it means. It literally means one-tenth. And the Bible says it comes from the very places where you are provided for. In other words, any source of income and provision in your life, that is where the tithe that we are to give to the Lord comes from. It comes from our resources. And the Bible says it is holy to the Lord. That means it is set apart. It is not a tithe when you give it. It is a tithe anyway. And the problem is there are many people who have been spending and living off the tithe, 10% of what they have been given. They, they're living on it and they're using it for themselves rather than to the Lord, and it is holy. It, do you realize that means it's set apart for God? It is not a tithe when you give it. It is belonging to God even if you don't give it. And so literally what the Bible tells us that, that uh, when we withhold it, well, 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 you know what that means. It means we're, we're holding on and we're using something that doesn't belong to us. And then I want you to look at Malachi 3.10. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. And by the way, a storehouse was a, a biblical description of several key ingredients, a place where you worship, 
a place that you could travel to, a place where ministry was given, a place where you received ministry. It was a place of communion. It was a place of fellowship, and it was a place where you met the Lord. I don't know about you, but that sounds like the local church. Bring the whole tithe, not 5%, but 10%. And by the way, let me go ahead and tell you something. You know the average Jew would give not 10%, but somewhere in the neighborhood of 23 and a third percent annually. They would give a second tithe, and then on top of that, there would be other offerings that would be giving. They were very gracious in giving. And some people cried about it too, and that, thing's, that happens. Anyway, the Bible says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. And I want you to know this, that there is uh, a great promise in the Word of God. And basically it says this, God's saying, I want you to test me in this. I want you to see how I will bless you more than you could ever imagine. I want you to get it in a giving contest with me, and I want you to watch what I will do in your life. That's a promise. And then I want you to hear what Jesus had to say about giving. In fact, he spoke more about giving than you can imagine. In fact, here's what the Scripture says in Luke 6, 38. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Now, Jesus says that, you, in essence, you can't outgive God. And he's going to bless you more than you could ever bless him. In fact, he's inviting us, once again, to get into a giving contest with God. And here's the deal. The more you shovel toward him, he's got a bigger shovel. And he has the ability to bless you more. And I want you to think not only uh, about money. I want you to think about giving of yourself in ministry. I, I know I hear people say, man, I'm just so tired. I don't have enough time. Here's the deal. You start giving time away into blessing the work of God, and you're going to watch that God gives you more time. You, you start giving your energy away and your resources away, and watch how God will compound and multiply what you do. This is the, the law of, of provision and prosperity. Uh, that's what the Scripture says. You know, if you think about it, that is an amazing proposition that God has given us. So, with all of those verses uh, put together, I, I want us to think about uh, why we give. In fact, I, I will tell you the very first reason why people sometimes give is, uh, well, let me ask it in a question. Do I give out of guilt? There are some people that, uh, honestly, they give because they're afraid uh, or that they are, that they got to. Uh, and if they don't, then uh, somehow or another, God's going to zap them if they don't give. Um, if that was true, then 80% of the memberships of churches would be annihilated. It's been said that 20% uh, give 80% in a church, and the other 80% that uh, doesn't give, what they make up to all together, that 80%, the 20% missing. Isn't that curious? Think what would happen if every church in our country actually tithed, began there, and gave. We'd have more money than we know what to do with. In fact, we would not need the welfare system in this country and the government giveaways. You know where it would be coming from? Churches. 
that could minister to people and be a blessing to people and make a difference in their lives. Wouldn't that be a great thing? The problem is we don't think like that. We think the government needs to do it all, when in reality, the, the plan has always been for the local assembly to meet the needs of those who had needs to be met. Did you know that the Jews in their synagogue, they would have a kappa fun that uh, would be taken every Friday and they would take it from their membership, and that fund would be used to meet the needs of widows and orphans in that congregation. And so the, this giving model uh, is not only seen in the Jewish mentality, but also the Christian uh, community. And that's why the deacons came to be one of the things to help with the needs of the widows, especially in the local church, because that was an expectation out of the model of the Jewish worship style of the synagogue. But there are some people that they give because, well, they, they feel like, well, I've got to. And if I don't, God's going to get me. Well, remember what the Scripture says, that God loves a cheerful giver. Now, that word cheerful is not the original word. Let me tell you what the word is. It comes from the Greek word hilarion, where we get the word hilarious. In other words, God loves uh, a hilarious giver. Now, have you ever, uh, when it's come time to take offering or write a check or go online, do you ever laugh? Well, maybe you're not giving enough. <laughs> what? needs to happen is, I mean, the, the real model is this, that we, when we give, we go, <laughs> I can't believe I wrote the check for that much. I can't, I can't believe I'm doing this. And you didn't even get, get sent a bill. Our church never sends out any bills or, or an assessment uh, uh, for sitting in a chair or taking up the air. We, we don't send out bills. But because God's people ought to be givers and, and be full of laughter as we give. That's what the Scripture says. So uh, the, the one thing that you and I should never uh, be giving out of is guilt or coercion or our fear of any kind. Now, there is a proper reverence of God as we honor Him, but uh, it is... Uh, an amazing thing that will happen in your life if you will just begin to give just like God wants you to give. Let me, let me just tell you something. I uh, had an email not long ago from a guy who uh, just said, I got to tell you my story. I have never been much of a giver. And the reason I have not been much of a giver, is I'm always behind. And it seems like uh, the, the ends never meet the middle. And somehow or another, uh, I just never have enough money. And it seems like I get, I get deeper and deeper and deeper in debt. And he said, Pastor, I got to tell you, I've decided I am going to start tithing out of my debt. I can't afford to do it, but what I've been doing surely isn't working, and I'm going to start tithing. And he said, I got to tell you, when I made that decision, things began to immediately change. All of a sudden, the business that I was in, all of a sudden, God began to bless it financially and bless it more and more and more. In other words, this, he said, mathematically, this does not make sense. But he said, I, I've got to be honest with you. I have watched God do so many awesome things in my life financially now, not because I'm a great businessman, but because I've got a great God, and he honors his word. 
Let me just tell you something. God loves to teach us to give. He really does. And when we give like God wants us to give, some amazing things will happen in your life. I, I will tell you, and, and I, I cannot believe that I have only gotten to one question to, uh, today, um, but I know that you're a slow learning class, <laughs> and i got to go slower. But one of the most um, sad things that ever happened to my mom uh, happened uh, to her in a church. My mom was really concerned when she would hear sermons on giving and um, um, because she wanted to honor the Lord. So she went to the pastor. And by the way, I, I was raised in a broken home. Uh, my, my dad left, uh, didn't pay any child support whatsoever. Uh, and so my mom, uh, by the time I was 10, she was taking care of our entire family a single woman uh, there in uh, the 60s trying to take care of three kids. Unbelievable. And, but when she would hear sermons on giving, it really would bother her. And she went to the pastor and she said, Pastor, um, I just want to talk to you about giving. It is so difficult for me to make a living to take care of uh, my kids, do you think God expects me to tithe as a single parent who's struggling financially? And he looked at her and he said, oh no, Mrs. Dodd, don't you worry about it. There are other people who are more blessed than you that can take up the slack. You just do what you want and do what you can and God will honor that. Let me tell you something, that was a travesty. And my mom knew that that was not right. It was said by a pastor, but quite frankly, there are a lot of things that are said by pastors that are not correct. And that was one that was not correct. And my mom began to tithe anyway. And God blessed. I can never remember a moment in our lives uh, growing up that I didn't have food on the table, clothes to wear, and God taking care of us. It may not have been the greatest food. It may have been fried Spam, but I thought at the time fried Spam was awesome. But uh, let me tell you something. God took care of our family financially. And my mom knew what the Word said, regardless of what a pastor would teach. Let me just tell you something. A lot of us, we want someone to applaud us for what we're not doing and to somehow or another give us permission for our disobedience. And God wants to say to each of us, I want you to see me at work in your life. Now, financial problems are part of life. Amen? It's the truth. However, he who owns the cattle on a thousand hills knows your bank account and knows your life and knows what he has for you. Just give him a chance and start moving in to this arena of learning to give. But whatever you do, don't give out of guilt or fear or coercion. That's not how God wants you to give. He wants you to learn how to give freely. And we're going to talk about that more in the days to come because this is the number one issue that people have more problems with. You know what the number one fight is about in our families? Say it with me. Money! Money! It's not having too much. What are we going to do with all this money? It's <laughs> literally, it's <laughs> how are we going to survive? And so what I'm talking to you about is directly inverted to how you would logically think about how to get out of debt and get free so that you can even give more. You say, that, that's crazy. That's upside down. 
That's the truth. This is upside down from how the world revolves around the sun. However, you need to remember who created the sun and this entire universe. And he wants his children to get aligned to how he thinks rather than how we think. You see, that's really the basic problem. A lot of people think the only way you're going to get to heaven is that you've got to be good enough, you've got to give enough, and you, you've got to be so pure that God says, okay, come on in. That seems logical, doesn't it? That's wrong. Salvation is not based upon what you do, but rather what's already been done for you. That doesn't make sense, does it? That's exactly right. And that's what the Bible teaches us, that we don't even really understand what love is and grace is. And God is all of that. And that's why he sent Jesus to die on the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Wow. You see, the key to real life is giving. And it first comes to you when you are willing to give your life to Christ because he first loved you. You and I need to come to the place where we admit, I am totally bankrupt. I'm a sinner. I don't deserve any blessing or hand of God on my life. And that is the power position of realizing I'm separated. And then God steps in and can change your life when you invite Jesus to be the Lord, the boss of your life. And guess what? When he's the boss of your life, he not only affects your heart, he affects your pocketbook too, all the way down. He affects all of you. You see, that's how God works. And I pray that you learn to be a giver just like that. Thanks for watching Higher Aim with Dr. Kurt Dodd. Visit higheraim.org for more free resources. There, you can access our daily devotions, sign up for our monthly teaching letter, even download the Higher Aim app, and so much more. Just go to higheraim.org to get started.